everyone. Uh, my name is Sam McLean. I, uh, I am the head of security operations with Arctic Wolf. Um, uh, we are a, a, a managed detection and response service uh, run out of the cloud. Um, my last slide, the marketing guys put some stuff in there, so I'll talk a little bit more about us then. Just to give you a little bit of, of, of my background, um, I have been with Arctic Wolf. I'm a co-founder. Been there since the beginning. Spent 15, 12, 15 years at Blue Coat, and then before that um, was at Lucent and KPMG as a security engineer um, in pre-sales working with uh, firewalls. Uh, today, my, my conversation is about building a SOC, a security operations center, I'm focused on, on mid-market companies. Uh, not going to talk about it if you're, you know, a Fortune 1000 company and you've got money and people, but rather actually, you know, how do you, how do you determine what to focus on if you're a smaller company? You may be a two or a three man shop, maybe even a one man shop, depending upon the level of investment the company's made. So that's really what we want to sort of go through. Um, some of this, uh, if you're an advanced person, is going to seem a little basic, but the idea is to be a little bit more comprehensive in how you go about making decisions on what technologies to use and what to do. So start by thinking about why one would need a SOC. Why do you need an operations center focused purely on security rather than, say, overloading a network operations center? Um, and, you know, there's lots of different problems out there. It's, you know, users are... are some people like to say bad. I like to say uh, users do what users do. Um, so there's a lot of hygiene issues out there. Um, and, you know, most of the time, smaller companies don't have money to invest in the security space. And so they wind up with lots of debt. They basically patch the, do the bare minimum, put in a firewall, put in AV, maybe some kind of a spam filter, and then everything else can sit until something bad happens. And they become completely reactive, deal with what they need to deal with, and then three months later, they forget about how bad things were, and they just sort of let it leave. So there's lots of, of debt, and, and having a SOC is a way to actually see the things that you're letting in that you're missing so that you actually can deal with them. Um, and then just as you move to the cloud, as you move to different technologies, you move from traditional desktops and laptops to mobile devices and other things, just the threat landscape changes. And if you're not paying attention to the new sources of, of data, the new attack vectors, you're going to miss stuff. And again, you're going to wind up uh, really getting damaged. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that, that we see often in the mid-market is, is that a lot of people are like, I'm not a target. And so, you know, when we talk to people, what we've seen is, is that they are getting attacked. Most mid-market companies, 500,000 employees, their average loss from a data breach is measured in the millions, and, and that's significant. That can bring a company down, um, and that's why, you know, one of the reasons why this is so important, and most of them have some form of security spend coming this year, and so, you know, that's why this kind of, an, this is an area where, you know, as, as consultants, as security people, this is relevant to us. It's not just working at a large bank or working for, you know, a government or state agency. Um, so when you think about what a SOC does, you know, it's just the basic sort of what am I talking about when I mention what, what a SOC is. It is, you know, sort of most people think of sort of that NASA space where you've got all these monitors up. But basically, it's a group of people um, that are going to be used to monitor what's going on in the environment. Um, they respond, they detect things, they figure out, you know, do triage, forensics, is this bad? Then they respond. And generally, the SOC is the group of people that may or may not be together that's going to manage that response as well. They make sure the right resources are around, they make sure the right people are notified, the right incident response plans been implemented. Generally, they have some hand in user awareness training so that they can help prevent things. So there's a lot of, of effort involved in a SOC in, in managing and maintaining all the different aspects of a security infrastructure. And again, lots of small companies don't have enough of the different piece parts to actually make, make them believe it's worth it. And so that's, that's where this really can become um, interesting. Most of the time, the complexity uh, that's involved with setting up a SOC, setting up you know, a SIM, because that's sort of the core of what most people think of a SOC, that, that most of the time that, that, that's expensive, it's hard, and most of the people we've talked to that have tried to do it themselves are going to fail mostly because they just didn't realize what was involved um, longer term with it. So if we, if we take a step back and just sort of, rather than thinking about all the different pieces that would go into building an enterprise-grade SOC, 
let's say that you know your Goldman Sachs or your John Deere or your you know the Department of Homeland Security, and you're looking to spend millions of dollars and have hundreds of people to work on it. What exactly you know is the problem that you're trying to solve, and what's it going to look like? So if you think about sort of the normal metrics, and these are getting better in the industry, but by and, by and large, most people still go over half a year before they detected that something bad has happened in their organization. And even then, it can take them up to another two to three months before they respond. And so you're looking you know, at, at, at nine months, 12 months before people are dealing with it. And that, this, this survey includes the Fortune 500. So the people that are in the mid-market are probably even worse than this. They're a lagging um, indicator of what's going on. So again, what ex I, I sort of walked through this again. So what are you looking to build? Well, you need a way to, to, to collect all the data necessary. You need to be able to monitor what's going on. You need effective alerts that are meaningful. And then you need to be able to respond effectively when, it, when an event occurs. And you know, you're looking at all the different aspects. Again, back to that second slide of what kinds of things are driving this, this sort of desire for mid-markets to have a SOC. And it's sort of the changing landscape. Is it? It's not just users' desktops on Windows servers anymore. It's mobile devices. It's you know Internet of Things. All the different areas. You've got to be able to collect all that and make sure you've got the right processes in place to deal with it. So when you think about building this, when you think about setting up a SOC, it is a combination of these three things. And this is fairly standard, fair. But again, for a mid-market company, they may not even realize that this is something they need to be looking at. So you need the right people. Generally, you're gonna need some operations people to manage the systems that you're using. You need security expertise that's good, has experience, has the right knowledge. Then you gotta be able to keep those people. That's actually one of the bigger things that we see in the industry is, is that we'll go talk to someone and they'll be like, I had a great guy, he was awesome, he got all trained and then he went to work for you know Juniper. And it's just like, okay, so now I've gotta retrain a new guy and finding someone that you can afford that knows all the tools that you were using, this is not an easy task uh, to solve. And then you find out that, you know, someone's phone got hacked, you don't have the right expertise, you got to then go find someone who can do the forensics on a mobile device, figure out exactly what the threat of the problem is. So there's a lot going on here. Um, from a process perspective, again, there's lots of things involved in having good se security response um, processes. Most small companies are like, we know how to do backups, we test them twice a year, we're good to go. And that's their, the sort of the extent, oh, and we change our passwords. And, and when you go and talk to them and say, well, if someone gets fished, what's your notification policy? How often do you actually run tests? And there's like, uh, not so much. So again, all of those best practices that you take for granted if you've got good people on staff, a lot of people are just missing. Um, and then lastly, the technology itself. Um, this is an ever-changing landscape. You know, just about everybody in the space is like, our widget does the best thing. And the problem with that is, is that A, the person that you start with in your SOC that sort of starts to build it might be a Linux person. And so you've got all these great Linux tools. And then he goes off, goes and works for a reseller or goes, you know, decides to move someplace better. And now you suddenly got a Windows guy and he's like, I don't like any of this crap. I want my own stuff. So you wind up replacing everything that was there, starting from scratch. And again, you're 18 months before you're actually up and running. But having the right technology, having the right time to, to operate it, maintain it, keep it up to date, make sure that the log sources you're collecting in your SIM are actually real. Last time you updated your ASA, it didn't change the log format, and suddenly your parser's wrong and you've got gibberish data, but you won't know that until you go look at it, and then suddenly you're like, oh, well, I really needed that data because I'm mid-breach and I need to figure it out. So doing all of this is, is a fairly significant thing. So then, let's think about how you might design it. What are the capabilities that you're looking for? So let's start by thinking about the areas you'd like to cover, and I mentioned this earlier. It's gonna be the people, it's gonna be the devices, it's gonna be apps, it's gonna be the network. And then you think about the different layers that you have in sort of your security portfolio, whether it's just gonna be prevention, detection, or response. So here, detection or prevention is sort of the first step. Everyone gets a firewall, everyone does you know, sort of the same things. You've got Active Directory for the most part. You've got identity management, you've got controls when it comes to users. For detection, you know what? You're gonna use some kind of behavioral analytics. It may just be as simple as checking for failed logins once a week, or it might be something like Netrix, which is a much deeper package. But again, depending upon where you're worried about, what your concerns are, you're gonna have different areas of this spectrum all the way up that if you really do, have concerns, you'll have all kinds of, of governance packages that sort of deal with these things. From an application perspective, you'll have a web, you know, a, a WAF, 
So again, that's probably the basic that everyone puts in there. But then when you want to detect things, you got to collect all that data, run them into a sim, have someone who understands what they're looking at that can tune it and deal with it. And then from a response perspective, again, NAC, you're going to do user management. And depending upon, you know, as I build out the rest of this, I'm not going to go through each of these because, well, it's boring. Um, the idea here is, is that depending upon what risks you have, depending upon what kind of problems you have, is it user data because you're a finance person or is it intellectual property because you're a manufacturer or developer? You'll pick different areas of this matrix to focus on with your security spent. And again, as a mid-market company, you're not going to have millions of dollars in your budget. It might be a couple hundred thousand every year that you get to spend on. And every three years, you got to upgrade your firewall and you got to upgrade your desktop agents and all those things. So as you work your way through here, you do figure out what's important, what's not. And then, of course, you have to deal with recovery. Um, so depending upon how you fill this out and, and, and what you do with this data, you're really sort of playing Sudoku on this and figuring out exactly where you're going to where you're going to come back of it. So then let's start actually think about how you're going to set it up. You know where you want to cover. You know the different piece parts that you want to, in, in, you know, sort of integrate into your SOC. How are you going to build it? What, what are you going to do? So first thing is, let's pick an architecture. A lot of people, this could start as simple as, I've got Splunk, I've got feeding it data, let's just build around that. So you actually start sending it all of the log data and everything that you want, and someone happens to set debug on a router and you wind up getting you know, a pretty hefty bill from Splunk because you sent them a couple terabytes over a week without really thinking about it. Or you might go cloud-based. And again, simpler, someone else's computers, it's all good, but they're going to charge you, and then you wind up also having to send everything off-site. And a lot of people are like, you know what? We can't. We can't send our data off-site. It's just the company won't allow it. Um, you go hybrid. There are a whole bunch of different technologies. Gartner's all over the different architectures that are out there. Um, you need to figure out what architectures you're going to do. And then you actually need to sit down and actually figure out what you're building. So you start with all the different data sources. And then you get it into some kind of a system, generally a SIM. You're going to do a bunch of work to tune it, to, to, to pare it down. And eventually, you're going to get a list of alerts. And you know when we do this for customers, um, you, know, you start out, I'm feeding it. I don't know, 20, 30 billion log lines in a, in a week, you're going to get a couple million alerts. Trying to figure out which ones are really important, which ones aren't, that's sort of the science here. Once you get it tuned down, then you've got real alerts. Those are going to turn into incidents because you're going to start to recognize things that are real. And then the security team, the analysts, are actually going to go in. They're going to do the forensics. They're going to do the detailed work to figure out is it a ticket. They're going to work through remediation. But what you're really looking for here is, again, you don't want 240 days before you've detected something, and then another 30 before you respond. The, 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 you know, the, the, the idea, the, the, the goal here, the gold standard is, I want to actually get some kind of real-time correlation. I want to know within five minutes that something's occurred. I want to be able to react before I have to go all the way to recovery. Um, I was talking with a, a gentleman out at our, our booth earlier. Um, about an hour ago, we had a customer that got a ransomware. And um, you know, we had it, we detected it, we were able to get that person to yank that device off the network in under three minutes. And I'm standing here and I'm just tracking it in the email system that we're using watching it happen. That's what you're going for. Um, a lot of times what we'll hear from customers that we talk to, customers I've talked to when I was at Blue Coat, is they'll come in in the morning and everything's gone. And so their idea of detection is, I just realized I'm going to have a hateful day, if not a hateful week, trying to recover. It really sort of depends on, on what you're doing. The other area that you want is you need to have forensics capabilities. You need to collect the right data. You need to know where it is. You need to understand where it is. And so this is a sort of high level architecture of what a SOC should be. This is a lot of the detection and, and forensics pieces. But basically, you need a system that can collect the right data, can augment it with the right kinds of data feeds from, you know, whether it's security feeds, open source security tools, maybe you subscribe to, to something else, get that all in there, understand how it works, and then have the right people. And if you're really going to go for broke, you want to actually go out and hunt and actually find things before they happen. And this is sort of the, the latest craze in the industry of taking everything that you've got in a big, you know, I think they're calling them data lakes now instead of data mines. But basically you go into your data, your big data soup, try and find indicators of compromise that are not necessarily the compromise is about to happen or just happened, but rather I just got someone opened up an Excel spreadsheet and they've, they've reached out to a command and control center just say, I'm here. And then it goes dormant for three months. If you've got it tuned right, you can see that first reach out and stop it before it ever goes any further. 
Also, you can start to look for new things. You can go back and replay data through the system as new in indicators of compromise come across sort of the horizon of what you're paying attention to, you can go back, have I seen this in the previous two, three, four months? See if, some, see if you were part of the original group that got, that, uh, so, that got broken into. But this is what you're going for. And so for a mid-market company, you do want some version of something like this. So the thing that's really important when you're, when you're dealing with this is to know what you're going for. This is sort of a setup for a SOC. Then also know what, what you aren't going for. So when you start to think about, well, what else, what are other things doing? The, the biggest sort of uh, competitor, if you will, to IC of going and trying to convince customers that they need a SOC is the concept, I'm already doing it. I already have a SOC. And if you're a security person and you want to go talk to your boss, your finance guy, your business owner, and say, we need a SOC, they're like, I thought we already did this. Everyone else seems to think we do it. So what isn't a SOC? Let's start talking about that. So a SIM on its own is not a SOC. It's a tool. It's a piece of software. It's a cloud service. However you want to look at it. The problem with this is they're generally expensive. Generally, they charge you for what you put into the database. And then they're very difficult to maintain. And like I said, if you have one person who really likes Splunk and then they go and they leave, you have someone else who likes QRadar or one of these others or logarithms or something, you wind up completely reshuffling things over and over again. Or you start to compare yourself, I don't want to send all my Active Directory data in there because it costs too much. So the reason that we say a SIM is not a SOC is because sometimes their models, their business models are sort of contrary to the idea of vacuum every piece of data you have up because you never know when something's gonna be important. The next thing is let's overload our NOC. We have a bunch of guys, so if someone's laptop breaks, they get it. We'll just send the firewall logs to those guys. And they'll get an inbox with 30,000 alerts that say this, that this happened. Those guys generally don't have the expertise, they don't have the time, and eventually what'll happen is, is that they'll turn it off. They'll just put it, put in an Outlook rule, filter it out of the system, and it, they'll just ignore it. And then, oh yeah, we're getting the alerts, but, but they actually don't do anything there. Um, so, and then managed service providers, and here I'm not talking about an MSSP, I'm talking about a managed provider that provides storage or printers or other things. They'll say, absolutely, we can monitor this. That's just like the cloud is someone else's computers, MSS, MSPs that do this, someone else's knock. Again, do they have the right staff? Do they have the right people? How much are they gonna charge you to do it? There's all kinds of uh, things here. Do they understand the SLAs involved with something like ransomware, where they could actually go out and do things um, in, in a timely fashion? And then the last one, this one always makes me chuckle, Googling something is not a sock. And I have lots of people who are like, I get them, I do reviews, it's just not there. It's A, it's Google, we'll start with that. It's a great resource, but it's the, this is really, I don't need a smart person that's gonna be expensive. I can go ask the internet. And I'm just like, okay, look where that got the United States this year. Sorry, sorry. So the other option besides building it yourself is buying a service. And you know, again, this is, not, uh, this is not a sales pitch. It's not, I mean, that's what we do. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who can't build it. They're a three person outfit and they can barely keep their head above water. But then there's some people who are like, no, I don't need it. The functionality that you need needs to be there no matter what. So again, what you're looking for is the right people, the right process, the right technology. Um, and, you know, not to, to, to plug my company, that's what we do. We provide security people, we provide technology, soup to nuts, to make this all work. And that's really what you need when you're talking about a SOC. And that's what I have. Um, I don't know if there are any questions from anyone. I'll be out at the booth uh, to answer any questions if you don't want to talk about it in the group. Nope. Okay. Thank you.